tribe it is your girl Naja and I'm back with another video so this video well, let me fix my fro real quick you know girl this fro this fro is a little crazy this video is going to be a tribe tea I have not done a tribe tea in a little while I have just been like force feeding you guys my story times and I have not been sharing any of you guys stories I'm going to go in my email and find one and you guys all know that I do not read these before I sit my ass down in front of this camera so we're all hearing the story for the same time you guys like a piece of advice for um, getting your story chosen make sure that you have a juicy subject line and make sure that the subject sometimes needs to be the climax of the story because I've been seeing a lot of the um, submissions are always something like oh my boyfriend might be cheating on me or oh I like somebody and I don't know what to do me <laughs> and those are boring no offense but those are boring those are like everyday things that happen like I want some juice like I want some juice like I'm the one with the boring ass life that tells the everyday stories about me being in middle school and shit like no I want to hear you guys' juicy ass stories and also like kind of chill on the dark matters you know like we're trying to be happy and entertain each other and I'm not trying to belittle real life situations I understand like dark shit happens in this world but not everything needs to be shared like there are some things that have happened to me in my life that I don't feel comfortable sharing like I've been abused and all that shit but I don't feel the need to like put it out there because I know this is supposed to be like a fun space and I don't want to make this something you know I want to uplift people's days I don't want them to be reminded of their own trauma so just keep that in mind also okay so the subject matter of this is my ex called ice on me and tried to get me deported snitch he is a snitch okay I'm gonna okay hi Naja I'm a huge fan I've been watching your videos for quite a while now and I was kind of debating whether or not I should mention this story for tribe T but I figured why not okay so I'm changing all the names of the people involved in the story my ex will be called Pam by the way this story happened last year when I was 14 going on 15 I'm 16 now so this shit is recent as fuck this is also long as fuck I'm sorry LMAO Okay, just so y'all know, I was born in Mexico, but my dad is dark-skinned Mexican slash Cuban guy, and my mom is very fair-skinned Mexican. Why does that matter? What is up with, like, the Latina, Latino, Latinx community and colorism? Like, I'm gonna make a video about that when my DNA results come in, but, like, I don't get it, like, between the black community and, like, the Latinx community. Like, we have a huge problem with colorism. Like, you could have easily just said that, and it's not your fault, it's just this shit is, like, instilled in our brains, like, as black and Latinx people. Like, why do we have to go into depth about who's light skin and who's dark skin? Like, I, I don't know. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and we are legal citizens here. Just wanted to clear that up, clear up the fact that even though my family and I are immigrants, we are legal citizens before I say anything. Okay, so me and my ex Pam had been together for a hot minute because she was my first girlfriend and that meant a lot to me because she helped me figure out my sexuality. I'm a bisexual girl by the way. In the beginning of the relationship, it was fine. She cared about me and I cared about her. That was the first five to six months of the relationship, but she slowly started getting more and more rude and basically letting her true colors show. She would make me feel bad about myself. She basically lowered my self-confidence so I would never leave her. I'm pretty slim with curves and I've been like that since I was 13. I think it's because of my genetics because that's how my mom is too. And I'm not trying to shade her or anything, but she was a more full bodied white girl with no curves. So I could see why she would try to lower my self esteem and it worked. I felt so shitty about myself and I felt like no one could love me. To be honest, like I would just be like, well bitch if I'm so ugly why are you with my ass? Like. Why are you with me? If I'm just so ugly, let me be ugly in peace with your hating ass. Tell me that I'm too fat, my face is weird looking, and that I'm an annoying piece of shit, and that I was lucky she put up with me. No, bitch, you can leave. Like, <laughs> I'm so glad this is your ex. Like, I know I don't condone violence in relationships, but she could have, she would have just had to get like a good like little slap, and then I would have to walk away from that situation. Like, at the time, I truly believed her. I felt like crap and felt that I didn't deserve better. Even though I had only, even though I had other people hitting on me and telling me I was mad cute, I never felt like anyone but her could like me in that way because of her. I felt that they were just joking and were just trying to hit on me as a joke. Not to mention, she made fun of my culture and made me feel bad for being Mexican, Cuban, Latina in general. 
this is where I should have paid more attention and realized she was a racist asshole. Definitely, because just because somebody is having sex with another race does not mean they're not racist. You can be 10 times out of, okay, hate is the same thing as love. Okay, because in order to hate somebody, there's passion there, okay? So a lot of these girls that be all, oh, I would never date a black, oh, hold on, Ugh. All these, like, white girls, just for example, that be like, oh, I would never um, marry a black guy, I would never have biracial children, are the main ones getting some black eggplant emoji, like, that was a definite red flag. Every time I talked to my mom or dad on the phone in Spanish at her house, she would yell at me after talking about some, I don't understand why you just can't talk to your parents in English. You're in America, speak English. If you don't speak English the next time, I'm gonna kick you out of this house. Bitch! Bitch, are you serious? Like, this is America, home of the fucking melting pot, bitch. You got people speaking Arab around here. You got people speaking Creole. You got people speaking French. You got speak people speaking Polish, German. Like, what? Really? Okay. A year and a half after we got together, I finally started to break away from her more and more slowly, and I realized, and I started to get the courage to break up with her, but I never did. She broke up with me before I broke up with her take that as a blessing <laughs> she looked through my phone a lot and i guess she saw a text that i probably sent to someone mentioning how i felt like i didn't want to be with her anymore i don't know why but i felt heartbroken a bitch was crying non-stop not to mention that all of my friends aren't really my friends they were hers that sounds so manipulative that she did that like so not only did she, it's basically like she wanted to have even more control by surrounding you around her people. Like, I was alone, no friends, no girlfriend or boyfriend, only my family, and we don't talk much. So I felt really alone. Luckily, she broke up with me in the beginning of freshman year of high school, so I managed to make friends. All my friends were with Latino and or black people, and I was surprised that they didn't belittle or mock my culture because they could relate. I was so used to being belittled and mocked for my culture because of Pam and her all-white friend group that I was in. One day on January 20th, maybe, or if not late January, definitely after the 20th, but before the 30th, five months, bitch, like what is going on? All this time stamping, Jesus. She broke up with me, I made a post on my spam Instagram account saying, white people are so cringy when they say the N word with a hard R to be edgy and funny. It, it's a little bit more than cringy and that shit's not funny <laughs> ever <laughs> and she just commented have fun with you your restricted freedom of speech n-word with the hard er and i was just so fucking pissed bitch if that was me i know that y'all were little at the time because you said you're only 16 now but if that was me I would have been like, well, you was all up in this N-word with the hard E-R, poom poom, bitch. Like, you was loving it, so who's the real fool here? <laughs> like, I would have drug her ass. Like, what the fuck? The next day, I showed my school counselor the comment, and all she said is that there is no proof that it was her posting that comment. I was so mad. Okay, I'm gonna admit. See, that's why, okay, so like, literally though, we are in the generation, we're in the generation of... You could have screenshotted that and put it on Twitter and could have been like, all right, y'all do y'all work. And then it wouldn't even have been your fault. There would have been somebody that lives in fucking Calabasas somewhere or in fucking Idaho that looked up this bitch's whole information, put her school phone number and all that shit. And the school would have been on blast and they wouldn't have had a choice to take care of her. And in my opinion, that is not bullying. That is holding somebody accountable for their actions. Some Something like that. There was a girl that actually went to my high school. Like I graduated like four or five years ago, but she was currently going to the high school that I graduated from. And she said some really racist shit put her ass on Twitter I didn't do it somebody put her video on Twitter of her being racist they got my old high school on deck they got her Facebook they got her last name they got her phone number they got her address like I just feel like that's just karma like that's karma like I view that as bullying in my opinion I'm gonna admit that this part was wrong on my part and I should have talked to her but I didn't so the the later that day I posted some shit about her I was saying some shit like fuck Pam she's a racist ass white hoe who is ugly as shit and called me the n-word with the er for no reason I swear it's people like her that made Donald Trump president and I'm so glad I'm not dating her flat ass anymore I showed the school counselor Miss P what she said and he she didn't do shit 
she just said there was no proof it was her even though i showed her that it's her account that she's been posting on since she was 12. where all these dumbass white people are stupid she has no friends of any other race except caucasian ella mayo okay so where you fucked up with that is that you're you pro you had a bad experience with two white people and now you're trying to generalize the whole race as being like these two white people who fucked you over you know what i'm saying like that's where you really fucked up because instead of saying all oh, these white people blah 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 you should have been like this girl offended me with her racist comments and then i went to leadership leadership didn't do anything about it and now i feel like my voice doesn't matter like you get what i'm saying that's how you should have went about it and set me not oh fuck white people fuck white people because then that just makes you look like the angry black girl or the angry latina girl that the society tries to paint us as being you get what i'm saying in my opinion that's where you fucked up after i said that i didn't block her i knew there was a huge chance she'd see it and say something to me i was hoping that bitch would come and try to fight me but instead she just sends me a dm on insta screenshot provided i blocked out her username and picture oh there's a screenshot oh there is a screenshot hold on i'm gonna read it real quick don't say shit about me you don't know head ass head ass really there's practically no friends of any other race than caucasian white bitch what what the fuck are you talking about yes i do i have two close friends who are not both white like you assume my preference for w friends does not include race like you seem to think if you talk shit you're going to get shit okay that was cute i thought she just meant she was gonna try to fight me so i didn't text back the next day a bunch of people started asking me for molly i was so confused and didn't know why there was all these little white kids coming up to me asking me, hey, someone told me you sell Molly. I'm trying to get hooked up. Can you sell me some? I just told them that I didn't and to leave me alone because I didn't do shit. A few people called me a border hopper too, but I just brushed it off as Pam's dumbass friends trying to come at me. After school, I saw her and walked up to her and said, talk shit, get shit, huh? You're not gonna do jack shit because you're a pussy with no fucking courage. But she just told me to leave her alone and that she didn't mean sending me that and i did i'm not about to go through the through the first punch so i don't do any drugs no weed not molly nothing i had friends that smoked weed but i never partook in it because it wasn't my thing sure i made jokes about it but i i don't do it pam on the other hand did drugs like there was no tomorrow she was popping molly weed ecstasy and even fucking coke she was crazy with that shit. She started experimenting with drugs after we broke up. Okay, I'm waiting to get to the part because this is turning into a long video. I'm on, okay, so the next day, January 30th, it was my birthday, my 15th birthday. And if you're Latino, like super culture Latino, you already know you get treated like a queen for your quinceañera. <laughs> and my dad, right before I left his car to go to school, he gave me $200 and wished me a happy birthday and said that was my first of many 15th birthday presents. I insisted he didn't have to get me anything until the day after because the day after was when I was going to have my little quinceanera. It was more of a small kickback my parents let me have. But he insisted and gave me the money and he gave me it as I was leaving for the car because I was leaving school. During the second hour, I got called into the counselor's office. I was hella confused, but when I get there, the counselor, Mr. P, the same one who I told about Pam saying the racial slur, starts to search me. I obviously didn't have anything on me, but then after searching me, he tells me to sit down. He tells me that a student told him I was selling drugs. I was so pissed and I automatically knew it was Pam. I told him I'm not selling drugs or doing anything illegal. He tells me, how did you get this $200? I told him it's my birthday and that I'm sure Pam made this rumor up to get me in trouble for talking badly over her social media and reminded him that I brought him the issue. And he said, I never remember you mentioning Pam to me at all. girl i was so fucking mad when he said that so my ass my sassy ass says well then you're not remembering right because i showed you a post of her calling me a racial slur so try remembering a little harder he stared me down hard he was hella mad after that i just explained the situation in depth a little more i told him everything that i thought he needed to know i even told him he could drug test me if he needed to after i told him what was the tea he had the audacity to say to my face are you sure your people have a history of selling and providing drugs girl 
girl i would have oh my god like i would have started recording his ass in that office boy i would have i would have got paid like the fuck i just stayed quiet and mad and shit i ended up calling and he ended up calling in pam too he asked her if she had any proof her ass took out her phone and went into instagram dms tell me why she made a fake account of me she wrote a fake dm of her to herself of me offering her drugs it said something like i'm selling molly and zans hit me up if you're trying to get it 10 bucks for blah 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 and it was a picture of her white ass hand holding zans <laughs> like my hand is a light brown with acrylic nails how are you gonna pretend you're me with your pale ass hand <laughs> and little stubs for nails my g <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. That's funny as fuck. <laughs> and I'm thinking that Mr. P is gonna see through her bullshit. But then he says, that's pretty solid evidence. That's when I fucking lost it. I started going off. I'm all like, this is bullshit. You believe her story, but when I show you a comment linked to her actual account of her saying the N-word, that's not enough proof for you. What the fuck is wrong with you? I can't fucking believe this shit. And I kept saying more shit like that, and the counselor ended up dismissing the situation. He said it was a very he said, she said type of situation, and it kinda was, but not really, because I had that solid evidence on her. Also, he confiscated my money too. I called my parents to pick me up early because I'm on the edge of tears because I was feeling so shitty. Reminder, it's my birthday, so I'm fucking pissed. When I get home, I cry because I'm an emotional bitch and was like, damn, my birthday is ruined and shit. I hear a knocking at the door. I didn't check who it was, I just opened it. It was like three men. They were all ICE police officers and they said that they got a call that whoever was in this house came here illegally. And I just got scared. I got so fucking scared. I knew I wasn't illegal, but I was still fucking scared. And I could totally understand that. Like, that shit's not a fucking joke. Like, they're legit taking, I don't know, all of my non-American people. I live in Florida, okay? So I see this shit a lot. They are taking people out of their fucking homes and putting them in countries where, just because that's where they were born, but they don't even speak the language. Like, they don't even know, what, like, that shit is real. Like, that shit is very fucking scary. I'm over here looking dumb, but my, do my dad saw who was at the door and started talking to them, clearing up the whole situation. He showed them everyone in the household's papers, mine, his, my mom's, and my two younger sisters who were born here. I don't feel like typing out the whole process of what happened with the ICE officers because it was too long. And I wasn't sure what they were going doing half the time to be honest, but they saw that we were not illegal and we were fine. I was so scared at the time. This is long enough already, so I'm gonna make the rest of the story short. We decided not to press charges on Pam, but my parents talked to her parents about what she did and told them that next time they really will press charges and she got in trouble. I got called a border hopper for a few weeks at school by a few of her friends until people eventually forgot about the whole situation. That's it. I still see Pam at school sometimes, but I don't pay attention to her and ignore her. Wow. <laughs> wow, that was a lot. I would have been so fucking scared. Like. That shit's no joke. Like, I don't think people realize, like, unless you have parents that are not, like, okay, so, like, I even talked about this before. Like, my dad, he is a U.S. citizen, but his parents were born in Haiti, and I remember I had said that my dad was an immigrant, and he flipped the fuck out because he did not want to get his ass deported back to Haiti. Like, my dad can speak Creole and everything. Like, he'd be straight, but his family's in America. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, and that shit's no joke. Like, people are getting taken every day, B. Like, that shit is crazy. And Pam is a bitch, and I hope she gets her fucking ass beat. Like, the fuck? It is what it is. Um, tell me you guys your opinion on that story below. You guys can always send me in your stories at the shop at voodoochild at gmail.com. Oh wait, I'm lying. No, that's my business email. You guys can send me all of your stories at najasucks at gmail.com. It's going to be in the description below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. The truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Mm -hmm.